Hi, my name is Master Peter Brusso. What you're going to see is a little, a few clips from our Defender training DVD, just to show you what's on there and the quality of the DVD, and also some of the tools and the specialty items. So let's get right into the clip, and hopefully you will enjoy this and learn a little bit more about the Defenders. And I'm going to come in and cause an arm bar with my defender. What I want to do is move on the back side of his arm like that and pull it in towards me as I turn the wrist outward. His right hand wrist is actually captured which we'll see in a minute and I pull him down this way into that arm bar and then at the base of the mandible below the ear behind the jaw sensitive point pressure point you push him away Here we're showing it again, the bonk. Oh, I could strike and soften him up too if I needed to, and then come in on my arm bar and again push him away. I'm going to see it on the other side. You can see my left hand is on the back of his hand, and my fingers are around his thumb, meat of his thumb, and I'm going to roll that out into an arm lock. You can see it very clearly right there. Again, my thumb on the back of his hand by his pinky. Fingers around the meat of his thumb. Now, the reason why this hurts so much is the point is a very, very small area. And so the pressures are very, very high. You can kind of sort of do the same thing with your fingers, but it just doesn't have the point or the pressure that the defender does. As you can see, I bring him down. That breaks the choke. Now I'm coming alongside the carotid neck. We could have easily gone in other areas as well. But in this case, I'm coming right into the neck and pushing him away. A capture. Either digit or otherwise. Here we broke down through the center, and we're using the, in the pummel end to literally drive into his groin and we use the hook to take his arm down. Now again you see how I'm coming down through the center as I drive my hand down through the center it's going to break off that choke and that'll allow me to do a softening technique which is striking the pummel end into the groin not once but several times just to be sure. What you can't see is on the other side I've got his hand held with his wrist turn, as you can kind of see right there, on my left, over my left shoulder. And that came right off from the grab as well. And now I'm going to come in with my right hand and attack with the point, like a velociraptor, like a hook. And come in and pin that hand off by a digit capture. And diving down through the center, strike the groin several times edge with the pummel end to strike do a softening technique I just want you to notice uh, Dave's face there over my shoulder it's a very very painful and powerful technique if you have a sharp defender at the pummel end you literally will pierce the arm Again, capturing the arm into an arm lock for it to reach up to his head and have things happen, like him let go, him or her. But the bonk is done, as you notice, I'm holding down at the very end. It's all in the wrist. It's a, a rapid wrist motion. It is kinetic energy. It's smacking. Uh, it's speed. It hurts. And you're after the back of the hands, any bony area. When you hit like this, you can actually break the back of their hand if you're not careful, as you can see here, or if you're just trying to inflict enough pain for it to go on up and do its job. 
bang away. Now, of course, it works if they've got chokes or grabs, and you saw I did a follow-up strike, a bonk, to his head. So the bonking is a very utilitarian approach to your safety, or the pointed end. So these are general areas to show you how you can move in and strike with your defender. As you come around the outside of their arm like this, notice how it bends their wrist. And I'm still moving upward. My goal is to come all the way around the arm. And again, I'm showing the wrist. And this is about where we're going to grab. We don't want the hand to come off of us in a case like this. So you can see I'm coming up now to capture that hand and pin it to my own arm. At this rate, what I do is I continue to rotate around his arm, and with his hand pinned, I push slightly towards him and down, and then back a little bit, and you're going to take him right down. To do this ever so slowly, oh my gosh, this is a painful uh, takedown. This is the crosshand version. It's no different. You're going to be moving to the outside of his arm and hooking around it and moving down. So we invented one that has two points and also a pointed pummel. Now this is a serious device. This one, the only way we could do appendage captures was by a serration part of the top edge where we would hold it somewhat similar to a Defender 1 and you can kind of see. What's nice about two points is no matter where you push, or three in this case, you've got a point motivating them. You can kind of see, you can bring that right down inside of them. That body armor, it's right on the inside. Take them down, move them around. They become just like rag dolls, frankly. Wherever you have a point. Very interesting tool to say the least. No matter how you want to move your hand, you have the ability to literally move their body around without any trouble whatsoever. And here with a Defender 2, you can see you come up, getting a hold of a nose that way, pushing them up. You can use a point on either side of the cheek and move them around. Notice this, one on the, one on the jaw, one on the neck. Down they go. You rock it back and forth. It just gives you some features that other ones don't. New addition is the beak pieces, which we'll see here momentarily. The beak pieces were invented to attack digits, literally to break fingers off your body. You can see the two beak pieces fit nicely right over fingers or thumbs. It's twist and break. So those applications that need this, they have it. But it also, of course, with two little points like that, makes a great motivational tool. You can see there. Again, those beak pieces literally fit right over your fingers, or their fingers. And that, that's interesting use here, you see, there's three points there. Coming in, hooking in the back like we did before, pushing him away. Come on the back side and take a good look at that. It's also nice because things run into it, the fist can run into those two big pieces, pretty nice. Next, I was reading a message board the other day uh, from the BBC, and um, one of the gentlemen were commenting about how you can do this with your knuckles and your fingers. Well, this is one of the cases where I'm going to show you, you just don't have that kind of capability. Here is that lock over the 
the digit, break it off, just like the parrot. But more importantly, this one has a sharpened edge that amputates thumbs. And against a handgun, it's a non-compressible surface the handgun is. So you're striking against a very small bone with a very sharp object. Also, we have a teardrop digit capture hole. And, and that really locks the knuckle in there of the thumb tightly and causes pain in itself, wedges its way in there. So that was new, a new feature. And of course having points all over the place help you motivate people around. One of the other aspects about this tool is here. There's no nothing on your body that can simulate this one. What you're doing is putting it over and prying the tissue right off. You see, it's like twisting and turning two points. You also can strike to the head with a point like that, poking holes in heads. You can't do that with your fingers or knuckles. So these tools have features and things that hands just can't duplicate. Although they work on a similar version, similar thought anyway. The Defender Owl. In closing, you can see why there's various versions and models and tools depending upon your own personal self-defense needs. You'll pick one version over the other. I carry or have, obviously, multiple versions depending upon where I'm going to go, what I think I'm going to be up against. I encourage you to do the same thing. After you learn the power of these tools, which should never be underestimated, then you can kind of decide which one's best for you and your safety. When it comes down to the safety of you and your family, you know, no one has the right to take that away. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please be safe, train safely, and thank you for your interest in the Defenders.